Now, let me, let me go back to stand-up comedy, you know, some of your specials. Mm -hmm. I thought it was such a dope thing you did when you did that special about holidays. Okay. That was one of the dopest. I, I, it just even come up with the idea to keep it in holiday, different right. holidays, different yeah. jokes. Yeah. What made you think that up? That was really unique to me. Man, you know, brother, it's just like you got panic room. Okay. You, you got this during the, during the, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. this when you created this. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, 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 we come up with things in our brain, man, where we want to be different than everybody. I mean, some comedians just go up and just do stand up. I wants to bring, even because like new looks ain't funny. Mm -hmm. now, now, people don't even understand because if you look at the picture, my son drew it, it's showing the bigger Lavelle taking the mic, the smaller Lavelle taking the mic from the bigger Lavelle. Mm -hmm. and it's just a transition. People saying, How you going to be funny here? The laws all that way. How you going to be really? funny? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People ask you them questions. So I, that was one of them things where I came up there and I blazed it and being funny. But new, when I did the holiday, I said, I want to do a job. I got a lot of, I, when I go on stage, I try to, I try to season, you know, my jokes. Okay. Like if it's cold, I like to talk about my first True, 10 yeah. minutes going to be yeah. about cold. My, you know, when it's hot, this, talk about anything. I, I try my best to work on any area. Like if I see something on the table, the mm -hmm. card table, you want to tell jokes, find your way into that world and, and bring up things that nobody else talk about. Because right. cause, and they think it's minimal. And it's maximum. Right. And like you, I'm happy you like that because I like that special too. Yeah, and, yeah. And when, I went through a lot to go through it because I had fired my role manager. I went, I was on my own, didn't have no management, and, and I and I didn't you know, and I was able to get a deal. And I, I got with the agency; they got the deal, and I filmed <laughs> it right in my hometown. And, yep. and and I was wearing some painful ass Gucci shoes. Oh. <laughs> I was on stage in pain, <laughs> telling them joke, and it, and it worked out really good. And I was happy to do that. I wanted to do something different. Right. It's always having a having a moment, having an opportunity to talk about like the comedy vaccine. Mm -hmm. I, that, that was all about what we was going on right. in the pandemic. I said, man, you got to be that guy that has those genres. Mm -hmm. Genres makes people go, man, that's why the veil, because he talked about all this stuff. That's why the veil, he talked about this. And remember back, you know, it's, it becomes historic right. to me. One thing I like about you, what I hear when it comes to the audience, because I don't watch all you, I haven't traveled you on the road, yeah, yeah. but people say when you come back, it's different material. You know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of, yeah, some people don't do different material, which is, a, I can see 50-50, whatever, but mm -hmm. it's like you come with new shit every time you come back. You know what I'm saying? That that makes people endear you, too, because that's a true comedian who can come back with new material every time they come back to a city. You know what I'm saying? Or at least 90% new material. Yeah, you know I don't saying? be, I don't want, I get bored with myself. I don't want to talk That's a lot of self-confidence, though. Yeah. Let me tell you, that's a lot of self You think so? Yeah, if you come back with new material, because you think your ass is funny no matter what you say. No, I, I just think that I'm just tired of talking about that shit. For real, oh, okay. I, for real. I, I mean, where do you work out? Where you work out in the material? Most in front of people? I'm, I'm on stage. Work? I'm on stage. Three hundred sixty-eight days I know. Days so you working out on during, stage? During, well, during <laughs> major shows. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I don't go to open mic night with yeah. a little piece of paper. Nah, like, hell no. That ain't that ain't gonna give me what I need. When people are bought and paid and they still laughing at what the hell I'm talking that's about. A, that's, a, that's a bold. Yeah, you got some yeah. nuts on you. Hey, homie. hey, all right. If it go down, hey, hold up, nigga. I don't pay $25, hey. $50 for this I'm shit. I'm circumcising in the top, uh, but, uh, but, no. but the hey, balls, no. balls are always going to be there. <laughs> okay, that would be <laughs> brass steel or whatever. And that, that's how, and, and, but I mean, I don't, I don't really look at it like that. I think every comedian should to challenge yourself. How you think, you thinking you should do the same freaking set every time and thinking that you're supposed to get uh, uh, special every time for the same shit right. and you do change one stupid ass joke. Right. And I mean, cause I watch, I watch people that, that got mega success and I watch them and they, I see why they sit up and they be harboring on someone coming up funnier than them mm. because they don't be hungry no more because mm. they, they start up believing the hype. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, when you making that money, man, and one thing I respect about Chappelle, he's smart enough to be able to be on stage and talk about a million things. He talk about things that we don't know. Mm -hmm. He talk, I mean, the last couple of sets, he, he stayed on a subject, mm -hmm. you know, and I think he was going at some people, mm -hmm. you know, but it was funny. You know, it's just funny, that's cool. Right. Right. But I just think that you should challenge yourself. I don't care. You should challenge yourself, especially when you start really getting popular. Right. You should challenge yourself because you want to be fresh. When you come on that sucker, you hitting them with something. They that like, damn, I thought he was going to do the same thing. Because right. I got people wanting me to do my first special. 
that I, that I did. My can of brother gets a love. They want to hear that whole special. Right. Why you ain't do the right. grocery store? Why you ain't do the? Uh -huh. I said, man. I mean, you can go watch that. I mean, it ain't like R and B, like like R and B song. It right. ain't like Frankie Beverly where he can come up right. and go, yeah, happy feeling. Right. Right. I can't go over here and tell that joke the same way right. because I ain't feeling it. It's funny because if if, if he do new songs, all uh, new songs, y'all boo the hell out of him. Oh yeah, they yeah. want R and B. So like, like yeah. let Beyonce go up there and say sing, they don't sing single ladies. Right, right, right. But sometimes when we do a joke over again, you get one or two things like I heard that just last time. Right. Hey, why don't you do that joke? You did my girl with me. You ain't bring that. Like, right. That's what y'all want, man. Right. They don't know. Right. They don't right. know. But musician, you right. right. They will boo because right. they're like, this is a new song I wanted to put out yeah, there. Right. They be oh here yeah, we go. Right, right. <laughs> you know, you want to put that old shit on there. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's is that someone you look at? Like, do you look at people sometimes comics and say, "I like how he's moving." Maybe I can think of something like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, say, I want to try new shit or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't look at him like that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 when we were, we was out there waiting for Chappelle was. Chappelle was 18 when he started. Mm -hmm. He was sure. a kid, sure. and we was already hitting it. You know, you yeah, from sure, the DMV. Sure. Right, you know, sure. right, you know. Sure. He was I, when I heard about him, it was just a whisper. Okay. And when when he became who he was, I think what made Chappelle was his show. Yeah. His show, I mean, yeah. I watched yeah. that one, Killing Me Softly was a strong, one of his strongest specials. Mm -hmm. And I think Dave Chappelle was uh, one of those comedians that was circulated with the white folks before sure. he was circulated with sure. the black sure. folks. Sure. And sure. people don't admit that, but they were like, oh no, we know, no you didn't. You didn't know shit yeah. about that nigga. Yeah. You didn't know nothing about him. Yeah. And, I, and I be telling people, I said, I, I watch, I, yeah. I, I know. I mean, the cat, he was he was with the mainstream, and then he circulated mm -hmm. and came with the black. When his show came out, he was always a black man, mm -hmm. but you could tell he said he went to a, a arts yeah, art high school. Yeah, yeah I mean, he was he he you know, and it's great because he's very intelligent, mm -hmm. and he comes up on stage and he talk about, it, and I and I admire him for that. And one thing I like about him is that he don't be a shy away from his intelligence. Okay. And that's the one thing that I, I don't shy away from. I say a big word on stage and people repeat that when I say benounce to me. Right, and they right, say right. like benounce. Right. And they like that because it ain't a cuss word. It's a, a word that's in the in the dictionary. Right. Because I you know, I you know, my mom made me read. I mean right. made me read the dictionary. I went to school and we get free M and M's when we right. read the Bible. Right. Finding Bible version. You and them words sometimes are more impactful and, and that's one thing I liked about them is his knowledge. And that's what I try to do is get that knowledge, knowledge so right. I can talk about it. Right. And because everything has a funny. Right. Everything has a funny. And look how long it like, talking about taking a while when you got the um, um, last comic stand really took it to another level. With him, he was around with them white clubs, the mm -hmm. black people wasn't messing with him. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine who went to his manager one time and said, Yo, there's a club, a black club in uh, Ohio or whatever, someplace, Cleveland, whatever. I can get him in there. And his manager, you know, his manager told me, he said, I pay his rent to make sure he don't have to go to them clubs. All right, wow. To keep him in the, the, yeah. that circuit around New York area. Well, because they knew that. what they wanted to do with Cause, him. Cause, cause the kind of humor he had with a scar, he'd have got scarred coming to the hood where we came through. He Let's wouldn't have never got scarred. He would have just got, he would have got his nuts. Well, you think so? You you, I guarantee you, he would got it. The thing that, about, this, he was funny, he was funny regardless. Right, sure. But, his, but his, he would have got his venom. He would have okay. got his fire. Okay. And then he was still, see, he, that, see the thing, this, you know, I, be real. I'm going to be real with you. Honey, come on, we're here. <laughs> the real, realization of when people try to hide you from Our people. where you post, your okay. people, they don't want you to understand and find out that you are the product. Ooh, don't do that. Uh, I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. When you know what your worth is, you a dangerous motherfucker. Ooh. Yeah, because see, when he I found out what his worth was, it was he was already in the pool of sharks, and when they when he wanted that all that money, he knew how much money he was making, and he started seeing. When you around niggas, they all counting your money all day. Niggas mm -hmm. talk, man, right. you funny as fuck. Why they fucking up? These niggas fucking your money. They, they talk to you and they get in your head, and then you start seeing that you coming into some 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 ferocious ass rooms, slaughtering, okay. and you go into the white rooms and you slaughtering. And they see, you start saying, man, I'm bringing money in here. I'm bringing money over here. Why you ain't paying me what I'm worth? Mm -hmm. I mean, I still sit I still sit and deal with these promoters. I always want to try to undercut me knowing that I'm putting, putting asses in the seats. I'm still, I still got 75 to 100 people on a Wednesday night when niggas got to go to work in the morning. And then I'm selling out, they adding shows Come right on. after Labor Day. I know what I'm worth. I know what I'm worth. 
And so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dangerous person. And see, and that's what they was doing with him. Mm -hmm. They was keeping him away from you. See, see, a lot of black black comedians that like from Chris Rock them out, they they think that they they comfortable over there with white man. Okay. But he just taking him and not so you won't understand that you are the valuable commodity. And once you understand like that, that, like that, yes, you, you gotta you gotta look at. See, I don't I don't I don't talk too much. But because I know I had to understand my worth and understand when I when I fired my agent and all that stuff and I was by myself and I was booking myself and Negro when I say I made <laughs> I made like six figures in a week Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I was booked all over oh, the country six figures I thought you God damn yeah. Yeah, I, made, I made that one year. Yeah, okay. No, I'm not bragging, but I'm really? but, but, but no, no, I'm telling you, this, this is this is this is prime Lavelle Crawford. I'm not, you know, I'm oh, way on, I can use. Come come you on, know, on, it's not you like you. I'm sure mm -hmm. you you got where you your your vehicles mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You can do that on the, on the level. Mm -hmm. You got to know. And I built relationships with club owners. I built. I mean, I don't walk in there sassy, frazzy, talking like I, I'm the shit. Mm -hmm. I come in there being respectful, but I be letting them know, well, hey man, work. this call, this, this, this is what I think I know I deserve. Let's get it to there. Mm -hmm. I said when I come in and when I deal with these agents, well, we're gonna work. Then I, mm -hmm. I be like, okay, you don't believe in me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 40 years in the game and I'm still sitting up here negotiating stuff just because I, I've done movies. I haven't started a movie, mm -hmm. but. I've made my name in comedy where I'm getting the payment in comedy. You can't sit up and, oh, you can't sell out arenas. If you put the vehicle behind me, like you put behind these so these some of these people, some of these people are very great. They, and they're very talented. But they that that same vehicle you put behind me, I sell out arenas right, no right. time. And I give them a a, a hell lazy show every time I come Ooh, on that stage. Every, I'm, I'm telling you. Every brother, time I see you, brother. Hey, every time I see you. And I, I'm just saying, but the energy, that's that's where we are. You you understand when you're talking about right. Dave Chappelle, he paying his rent so he wouldn't have to mm -hmm. go over there. What kind of punk ass shit is that? So you sheltering him from his folk? And then when he got when he when you notice when he got on the show, he saw it. When he got his show, he saw it. And he, just like anybody, you start seeing, oh, this me. And the stuff he talked about was relative. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. blind races. That's mm -hmm, funny as shit. Yeah, yeah, and it's not yeah. funny. And the white people like, but you know, then he said, he said the only problem he had was when he sees the white boys and they would they would be comfortable saying, Yeah, remember you did that one skit about the nigger? And you like, hold on, man, you ain't supposed you ain't supposed to say that, dude. You too get too comfortable. But see, that's the thing that they wanted to keep him where they think that they can come be free to say that in front of him mm -hmm. and not get their lip busted. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, the word nigga is not relevant mm -hmm. anyway. It's not, it shouldn't be. I'm mm -hmm. 55 years old. You call me nigga, as long as you don't touch none of my nigga shit, we ain't got no problem. <laughs> uh, now you touch my nigga shit, we gonna, that's when you're gonna right, understand right. what lightning is, right, cause right. I'm gonna put it on you. <laughs> but otherwise, the word is never gonna condemn you. I mean, I never let nobody sit up and say something, but you already trying to control my situation by calling this cancel culture, all this BS that you, you we sit out here and live with. Man, right, right. I mean, you just gotta be you. Like the powerfulest it. people that you see in this comedy game never live by the line. Turn me up a little bit, turn me up a little bit. If you like that clip, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell. In fact, why don't you hit both of them?